Hello, my fellow hunters. Would you like to know how to attain maximum power? Why would you like? No, no, look, I know you're already strong. I'm just, just, just let me show you five ways to buff yourself before you even engage your target that'll make things easier. Yeah, see, like, I, that, that's, that's just, sh that's just showing off. It's not, that's, <sighs> number five. Yes, I realize I'm just essentially talking to myself, don't judge me. So this one then has been quite a staple of Monster Hunter in perpetuity, and it is really good. <laughs> what a joke. What a, what, what a, <laughs> kill me. So it's going to be quite a well, duh for you veterans out there, but for everyone who's new to the world of Monster Hunter with World Monster Hunter, it, that's fine. What you want to do is grab yourself 60,000 zenny, which seems like a lot, but you will eventually have money just rolling in and go talk to this provision stockpiler and, and actually make sure you talk to him from, from the opposite direction so it's as annoying as possible for him to actually have a conversation with you because he's all like to me, oh, 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 hell, hey, hey, how you doing? Let me just pop a squat. And then you need to go buy yourself a power charm and armor charm. These things are permanent, significant attack and defense buffs that just sit in your bag. Permanently taking up two slots, which isn't the end of the world, and you're just stronger for having them. And then even better than that, because you can then go and craft them into power talons and armor talons using Basil Goose's talons. And these will then give you an even bigger attack and defense buff than the power charm and armor charm you used to craft them. But then the catch is, once you have used them up on making the Talon versions, you then go back to him and, and of course, as I, as I said, make it as annoying as possible for him to talk to you. <laughs> and then you, once again, buy a second copy of power charm and armor charm, have all four of them in your inventory, and congratulations, you are a lot more powerful than you were before. So to give you an idea of how much of a difference they do make, without any of the four in my pouch, I have 1,094 attack and 369 defense. So let's go and pop them back in. So as you can see, the difference is quite literally night and day. Oh, come on, controller! It wasn't that bad! So, number four might also be initially a, oh, c c really, come obviously to, well, really all of you, but trust me, okay? We're going to talk about the feline kitchen and the awesome buffs it can provide. So, here's some food for thought. I imagine a lot of you just get the chef's choice platter, which is absolutely fine. It's a lot of health, a lot of stamina, a smattering of buffs. It's certainly solid if you don't really care about getting involved with this system too deeply. But if you do, you have the custom platter, and you can use this to really tailor the buffs that you want going into your hunt. So let's say I just care about damage. Well, then I can simply put in six lots of meat, and then lo and behold, we can get ourselves a attack up large meal, which is really nice. It's a, a big increase, but that doesn't really give us a lot of health. It doesn't really potentially get the feline skills that we want, and that's important too, especially the feline skills, and that are these. They're all color coordinated, so for example, the red skulls, 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 the red skills, <laughs> Skulls. The red skills. Oh, I'm gonna leave that in. The red skills all correspond to the red section of ingredients at the top. So, for example, here we go. And now I've got a chance of activating the six times red skill. Courage makes it easier to stun monsters, and that might be really good, especially if you're using the hammer. But you've also got some really cool things like Moxie, which prevents you from being one shot one time. You've also got got stuff like Iron Carver, so you can't get knocked back while carving, so perfect if you're planning on leeching. Burn in hell. And the thing is, the way to make them actually happen, because it's only RNG if they do activate, you see the activation chance at the bottom right there, the way to get them to activate more often is to choose fresher food. Anything that happens to currently be sparkling with green really ramps up your activation time. So now that I have two reds and two uh, blues, I've got a good chance of getting Acrobat and Polisher, which will let me sharpen my weapon quicker, and it will 
will also let me recover from being sent flying quicker. Both, you know, really just useful things to have. And then this way, I get 40 health, 50 stamina, and then a triple small buff across three different categories. Yeah, that's a pretty hefty meal. I kind of like that one. So essentially, just take the time. Actually go through this. And I, I could spend an entire video talking about it, but I, I feel like I might put you all to sleep by the end of it. Just go through this. Have a look at what kind of combos you can do and see if you can't find something a little bit better than your chef's choice. And you'd see how there's loads of question marks of ingredients that you don't have, most likely. Well, you unlock these from various places. So one of the main ways to get yourself new ingredients to play with are deliveries. See, throughout your talkings to people and stories progressioning and all of that good stuff, you will get asked to bring various items and your reward will be an ingredient. So great mutter, an ancient sea bream, aroma to celery <laughs> I was expecting to be challenged like that and uh, then you have a lot more flexibility in what you can and can't do you can also find ingredients at rare gathering nodes around every single map so it's worth doing a little bit of exploring and seeing what you can make happen moving on so we arrive on a hunt and presumably you've brought stuff with you but what stuff? Because there is a myriad of craftable consumables that can give you one hell of a fighting edge. An easy one to have a look at is, let's say you want to get yourself a nice little attack up large, but look, it doesn't come with any health, which is kind of sad, right? Extra health is pretty good when you get ragdolled around the place. It's nice to not get one shot in the process. So let's have the best of both worlds, shall we? And simply consume a max potion. Because not only will this be a full heal no matter what, it also extends your health bar all the way to the end. So in this case, you can have your meat and eat it too. But we can go a lot further than that. So there's a lot to play around with on the list of craftables. You have nutrients, which is another way to increase your maximum health. The max potion is there using a mandragora and said nutrients. And really, while there's a lot of ingredients that go into all of these various things, they're all very simply gathered and cultivated back in Astora. So keeping on top of them while kind of busy work isn't super difficult. Catalyst, you will need. Bitter bugs and honey, again, too very easy to keep in stock materials and the reason those catalysts are great is because you use them for example to make dash juice which halves your stamina consumption for a few minutes needless to say that's pretty decent double the amount of rolls double the sprinting it's fantastic on quite a few weapons the bow springs to mind being able to dash to the side shoot dash to the side shoot over and over and again twice as much it's a dps increase at that point and a survivability one because you just have so much more stamina to play with you also have things like the immunizer which basically speeds up the recovery of the red portion of your health when you take a hit but what we're interested in again is power and defense so to that we have the demon drug and the armor skin and they need adamant seeds and might seeds respectively so they are going to become your new best friends. You can find them in the Veil, in the Wild Spire, in Recess, and by themselves, they are already excellent. They are very quick to pop. 1286 attack right now, quick little nom, lasts for 3 minutes, 1334. So find some, cultivate them, have a strong supply, and just keep churning through them on a hunt, and you're going to find things a lot easier. 399 defense, quick little nom, and 419 defense. But these things aren't just for having by themselves of buffs. No, they sow the seeds for something much greater. So... The Demon Drug and the Armor Skin, then. They give you a permanent, until you cart at least, attack and defense increase. It's about half the amount of the seeds, just under. The mega versions of them are exactly half of the seeds, but again, permanent until you cart. The mega versions are such a tiny increase over the normals, I, I wouldn't say it's really that worth it, but it's kind of good habit to just pop a demon and a armor at the start of a hunt and just be that much stronger. You also have the powder versions of both, which is essentially just a AoE version of the seed 
guaranteed, which your teammates will really love you for, and again, they're not that hard to make, so why not make your group of hunters really happy with you, give you a better chance at success, maybe save someone from carting and yourself from wasting your time on a failed hunt by giving them a defensive buff, it's just the neighborly thing to do. And then we have the Might Pill and the Adamant Pill, these last for 20 seconds and they remove the base seed buff, and they are a huge increase, equivalent to attack up large on the hunting horn, one of the biggest single attack buffs in the game, but 20 seconds, it's not a lot to work with. I only really use them on a sleeping monster for the wake up hit, and yeah! Oh, 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 oh! It's quite effective, but their use tends to be quite niche. Now, in terms of what will stack then, you can have the demon drug and the seed and the food buff all at the same time for a combined huge increase in offensive power. But the thing is, right, it's a lot of ingredients to keep track of, a lot of things to cultivate, a lot to go and gather, and it also completely and utterly fills your inventory with everything and leaving you no room to acquire new stuff during the hunt and it's just a pain to scroll so long through your item bar trying to get to the one that you want. So what if there was a way to do all of this even easier and more effectively? Well, there is. This one is gonna make you squeal with joy. <coughs> Oh yes! Introducing Mushroom Mancer. This comes in at number two, and essentially... <laughs> rise! Rise! It's, it's not, as, not as cool as the more classic Necro version. So what does Mushroom Mancer let you do? You got the Moss Swine Mask, and you got the Doba Chest or the Gloved. You can also make a charm for it, and what it does is it lets you eat mushrooms as if they were essentially buffs, and they are very potent buffs, in fact potent enough to essentially replace the need for everything I just told you before. I'm sorry, but I needed the context of what the mushrooms do for- sh okay, shut up. Alright, so let's go- <laughs> You don't have to shut up, I'm sorry. Let's go back out to a hunt then. So here we are then, with our lovely collection of mushrooms. You want blue, mandragora, nitro shoom, parashoom, devil's blight, toadstool, and excite shroom. And each of these is now fantastic. So blue mushroom becomes a really quick potion, which is, yeah, pretty damn good. But then again, you won't really be using this unless you're planning on taking the mushroom answer build out into the field. And there is a really good one involving it that I, I, I might talk about in a later video. But for now, we don't need to worry too much about the blue mushroom. But the mandragora, for example, becomes a freaking max potion. So that's really nice. That saves you a lot of effort and time in uh, gathering and farming and crafting. The Nitro Shoom becomes a freaking demon drug. Permanent attack upgrade until you cart. Parashoom becomes an armor skin. Permanent defense upgrade until you cart. Really quite nice, Devil's Bright is the dash juice, half stamina consumption. Again, really pretty good. Toadstool, we get immunizer, increased recovery speed on the red part of our health. And you see the buffs really start to stack up. And then the Excite Shroom is a little bit on the random side. It can just kind of do a thing. So again, we don't need to worry too much about that. But you might be asking, well, that's all real and good. And you know, honestly, Rage, you're a fun guy, but... <laughs> You, you, I, I know, thanks. And why would I do this when it means I have to wear, well, this monstrosity? And then I lose the armor that I actually want to wear with my skills. Well, fear not, because what you can do is you start the hunt, put on your mushroom mancer, eat your mushroom buffs, and then you can simply change equipment back to your actual loadout. You still have all the buffs that you just gained. So you just cultivate four or five mushrooms on tap constantly and then just pop them like that at the start of every important hunt. You don't need to do it for farm hunts, you know, monsters that you can kill with your eyes closed. It's, you know, a fair amount of time investment. But against Elder Dragons, against Tempered Monsters, against Tempered Elder Dragons, 
it's a fair investment in your success chance. And also, as an extra bonus bonus, you can still have yourself the Might Seed on top and a Adamant Seed also on top. So really, it's all pretty tasty. So yeah, that is one hell of a way to start out incredibly powerful mushroom buffs, your seeds, your power charms and talons, and your food. But wait! There's one more thing! So my final and number one is the Coral Orchestra. This is a Palico gadget and it is amazing. It essentially gives your Palico a mini hunting horn that will consistently buff you with a plethora of incredibly useful buffs. So let's head to the Coral High Ground, show you how it works and indeed show you how to get it. So here we are then in the highlands. You want to start at this camp and head out of this rock. So, initially you might be thinking, does this really count as pre-combat buffs if it's a Palico gadget that they use in combat? And yeah, I could totally get why you'd think that. However, you know how you can ask your cat to use your Palico gadget on demand once it <laughs> gets high enough level? Sorry, I... <laughs> uh. Well, you can do the same with the Coral Orchestra. So if before I set off on a hunt and these buffs left a few minutes each, they're really solid. I'm like, yo, play me a song, my friend. Play me a song. All right, cool. We got ourselves a little bit of a defense buff. Lovely. And then I'm like, you know what? I, I, liked, I like the horn, but I, I want you to want you give me a bit of drums. <laughs> Look at him go. It's just so awesome. And then from this one, we get earplugs. So yeah, earplugs are pretty solid buff there. Getting yourself resistance against the annoying constant flinching of the roars that constantly come at you and interrupt your goddamn great sword charges. Not that I'm bitter or anything or I'm angry that I mistimed the shoulder badge, but that's fine. You can also get divine blessing. You can get affinity, attack, resistance to stuff like standing in lava. He can help you with poison. He can raise your recovery speed. He can do so much for you. It's really quite absurd. In fact, while fighting a tempered Beelzebub, Goose, I had like six buffs up at once at one point, and that was without me requesting extra ones. So I think this is by far and away the best Palico gadget, unless you're trying to farm materials, in which case obviously the Plunder Blade. So go where I just went from that camp, and you'll arrive down here, where you will see three Grimalkins riding Shamos. And then you fight them. You kill the three Shamos that they're riding, and then they will run away. So once you have killed them, you want to head through this little crevice, and you should have a scout fly trail now, but in case you don't, follow it round. Admire the view. And then, with some speed running that will sound normal, sped up. I hope you then bob underneath this waterfall, which will take you to the Coral Highlands Grimalkin's secret lair. Grimalkin? 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 I, I always say Grimalkin. I don't know why, but it's, it's technically Grimalkin. Either way, once you get here, they will speak to you and ask you to go kill two Titsuya Kus. It will be an actual, you know, proper quest. And then you do that, you get the Coral Orchestra. It's really that simple. And there we have it. Them's my five ways for making yourself as strong as possible before you've even drawn your blade against your foe. Hopefully you learnt something at least a little bit new, and hopefully you at least had a little bit of a fun. Let me know how you enjoyed this. It's kind of new to me making guidey type things in this manner, so feedback is always appreciated. But for now... Thank you so much for watching. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.